Hi. Okay, so anyone that knows Gabriel knows that he is mildly infatuated with Apple products. No, Actually, it's... I rescind that statement. It's not even mildly. It's majorly. I uh, don't push it. Okay, Apple bra headphones, the Apple MacBook Pro. What is that? Keyboard? Mouse pad? And you have, we're filling in some iPad 13, which is yours. Which you got recently. Look, having every single product we've ever made does not constitute infatuation. It's just appreciation. <laughs> You're literally a self-identified I... fanboy. Okay, fine. The reason we're talking about this is because... This video is a Gabriel roast. Yes. Oh. <laughs> no. Shit. The reason that we're talking about it is because when you said you wanted to get the Apple Watch, for me it was a little bit like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> Gabriel's Apple addiction <laughs> kicking in. But then you said that you thought it would be really good for digital minimalism, which I was super intrigued about because on the surface, I sort of disagreed with you instinctively. And so that's what this video is about, whether or not the Apple Watch is good for digital minimalism. And we're just going to chat and talk about it and hopefully something coherent will come out of this in the end. I do have to agree that on the surface, the idea of getting more technology mm. to try and minimize your mm. use of technology is a little bit of an odd one. And it's not pure. It's not the only reason I wanted one. They partly just look pretty and uh, nerdy and techy. Yeah. But it was a very real motivation mm. underneath that. Mm. And for me, it's about, it's not about less technology. It's about having a tool that can help use technology in a way that suits your values and suits what matters to you. Mm. So how do you think that's actually worked out for you? Like, has your intention manifested in the actual technology and the way you use it? Yeah, it's mixed, right? So I would say the Apple Watch is a big magnifier of attention one way or the other. Mm. So in some ways it's magnified my attention in a positive way and away from my phone and away from devices and away from distractions. And in other ways it has magnified my attention toward those things. Mm. So that's probably the balance. Mm. Yeah, my impression of it is like, on the one hand, it's good because you don't have to take your phone everywhere with you, for example, so you can have more of that just uninterrupted, anti-phone, free, unstructured time. But then on the flip side, an Apple Watch is basically a phone on your wrist, particularly if you install certain apps. So there's also that element of it that comes into play as well. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And let's look at it in two parts. Let's start with the positive and then let's talk about the negative. Always wanting to start with the positive. Apple. <laughs> like you said, the first positive is that you don't need to constantly have your phone on you. Mm. So it's not so much that going out without a phone, although you can do that too. It's more just when I'm at home, my phone can be sitting on the other right. side of the house yeah. and it's not constantly with me. Mm. So that's the first thing. Yeah, I can see how that would be really useful because like for me, I always check my phone in the little in-between moments. Like if I have 15 minutes in between meetings, I'll pick up my phone and then that's a massive time sink and it, it really does add up. So I feel like I can see how having a watch instead of a phone would prevent those reflex checking. I mean, one way of looking at this is you would say, well, why don't you just have a phone away from you and not have your watch with you? You don't mm. need either. But realistically, there are some things that I need to get notifications for. Mm. For example, work. To log into anything, you have to validate your identity yeah, yeah, yeah. and go to freaking duo. Four factor authentication. Four factor authentication, <laughs> and it just pops up on my watch, and I can press a button, and I don't have to have my. That's like which is literally really enough to motivate me to get one. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Two FA notifications. That's I'm, right. I'm getting an Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> so that really does make a big difference. Mm. Functionally, it means I don't need to have my. And it's you know what the other thing is. Mm. I play music through my Sonos throughout the day. I basically always put some music on, and. I will hear a track and go, I don't want to listen to this track. And I don't have to pick up my phone and do yeah, it. I can right. just tap on my watch and it'll skip the song. So little things like that where your kind of day-to-day -day interactions with your phone are drastically reduced yeah. by having this thing that can do the basics. Yeah. It's so interesting because those are actually such minor things. Yeah, so and small. I feel like if you told somebody them on the <laughs> surface, you'd be like, that is Who not cares? a good value prop for getting a yeah. hundred dollar piece of technology. A hundred dollar piece of technology. Hundreds. Okay. I meant multiple, <laughs> multiple hundreds of dollars of <laughs> technology. But but if you read something like Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, you kind of it, it kind of confirms what we already know implicitly, which is that those in-between little moments actually yeah. make the biggest difference and yeah. drain your attention the most. Yeah. So that I can see how that's useful. Yeah. Okay, so preventing those little in-between distractions, that's a big one. And then is there anything else that you feel like it's helped with digital minimalism-wise? Yeah, at the beginning we talked about it's a real director of attention. Mm. And what we were just saying there is it stops your attention getting directed to your phone. Mm. But it actually can help your 
attention get directed to other things so probably the big one is health mm. it's really good for tracking things like are you getting up and moving are you standing mm. are you being conscious of those things it can remind you to do your mindfulness like all these little things that you actually are getting reminders to do and it goes back to like not all reminders and not all notifications are bad it's about how does it fit into your values and what you care about mm. and i really care about those things mm. so it has made me a lot more conscious of those things so that's a really positive thing i think mm. and the last thing it's really easy to capture things mm. without consuming mm. so if i go on my phone to take a note for example Obviously, that's quite a lot of attention and I can get sucked into things. But I can capture things like reminders. You would have heard me doing it earlier. Mm. Um, when I'm cooking, I get timers on here. Probably the big one is work things. Mm. Often, I like to talk things through. So what I'll do is I'll be driving or I'll be walking. And I probably look like an idiot, but I'll be sitting <laughs> going... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm not getting distracted. I yeah, just can yeah. sort of passively talk whilst I'm doing something else. Mm. Which is really good. Yeah. And again, that's one of those things where it's not just not a negative. It is additive mm. to have those means of being able to record things really, really easily. Mm. Cool. Mm. Okay, so to summarise, it sounds like what you're saying is the first big thing is that it minimises those in-between liminal distractions that happen in the small moments, but yep. that actually add up. Yep. And secondly, it can actually direct your attention to the, your priorities and the things that you care about and want to be focused on. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Okay, so those are the good things. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about some of the not so good things. With no, the no, it's an Apple product. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> Maybe I'm better placed to start off the negative discussion then because I feel like my impression of it when you first got your Apple Watch was basically just it pinging all the time when we were on a walk or trying to have a conversation or trying to cook dinner or whatever it was. And I found that quite, not like personally annoying, but I did wonder for you how you were putting up with that because you're somebody that hates that. Mm, yes. And if you aren't super, super careful, if there's an influx of notifications coming into your phone and you are not filtering them somehow, mm. it's awful. Mm. Because every time somebody wants to get your attention, they can. And that somebody could be somebody trying to sell you something or a friend or mm. whoever it might be. Mm. Just a, a variety of non-urgent things. Yeah, that's right. And you, you cannot escape it because... For me, this thing sits on my wrist from when I wake up until I, I take it off the shower and I take it off to go to bed. Other than that, it's on my wrist. Mm. So they can always get you. Mm. That's the big negative. But I have noticed that it's far less notifications now. So what have you done to fix that problem? I don't know if we've spoken about this on the channel before, but there's this thing called focus modes. Focus modes are amazing. And the reason they're so good is because they're just default. I don't yeah. turn them on. Just Do you have the ones on your phone, they sync to here? Automatically, <gasps> yeah. So whatever's on my phone is on my watch and it's on my laptop. Yeah. So it's just all the same. That is very nice yeah. of Apple to do that, I will say. <laughs> She's getting it. <laughs> it's a pretty blank slate tool. Mm. How do you set it up? How do you use it? You mm. use it to support, you use it to inhibit. Mm. Cool. So in summary, yes. the Apple Watch can be a useful tool for digital minimalism because it can help you direct your focus where mm -hmm. you want it to be and minimise distractions. But you have to be intentional about the way that you set it up in order to achieve that goal. Yes. Would you say that's correct? Totally. Based on that, yeah. what are some tips that you have to get the most out of the Apple Watch and stay nice and digitally minimal? Yeah, I've got three. Number one is notifications. That's the most important. Triage them. S set up your focus modes. Yeah. So, and make it default. Make sure you're limiting the notifications that are coming in. Mm. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That's like the th common theme through all of our digital minimalism totally. videos. It's just like, fuck the notifications right yeah. off. The second thing is apps. So I mean this in a positive way and a negative way. Mm. There are a lot of really good apps you can get on here. Mm. Uh, an example is like Audible, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, a bad example is Instagram. Probably don't put the Instagram on just for me at least. But think about the things that you really want. I have a swimming coach app on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Really positive. I have a mindfulness app. I've mm, used it. Mm. Like I think the apps define the experience, that mm. plus the notifications, mm -hmm. because that defines the type of tool it is. Mm. So control your apps is thing number two. And then thing number three is think really hard about your watch face. So you have a whole bunch of different watch faces. I don't know if you can see this, if not I'll edit it in, but this is my day-to-day -day watch face that I use. It has things like the weather and my activities and timers and UV index and any events that I have coming up. Mm. So that's quite a bit of information, but it's really helpful information for me. And I really like seeing that. And it gives me reminders to do things like put sunscreen on 
or stand up, mm. which is good. Mm. But a lot of the time I don't want that. And so what I'll do, like, for example, if we're out on a date or we're having dinner, I just put it like this and it's pretty and I like it, but it's just the time. Mm. And so if you look down on it, there's nothing to think about. There's nothing to It's a watch you. face. It's a watch face, literally. It's literally a face. <laughs> Apple, I'm telling you, amazing, <laughs> genius. Um, Promote that designer. Exactly. <laughs> So that's really good. Yeah. It's really easy to change. You can just sort of swipe along swipe. and it will change to a different watch face. Mm. That's my last tip. Think about your watch faces really carefully. Excellent. My question for you. Mm. Will you be getting an Apple Watch? Not yet. Why? Mainly because I'm really busy at the moment and I don't want to go buy something. <laughs> but if I had a free weekend to go browse JB Hi-Fi, I might consider it. So you wouldn't out and out say no? No, I, would, I definitely wouldn't say no. It's more just that, like, I feel like my current systems with my phone and my laptop are working really well for me. I yeah. feel like I'm in a place where I'm being really intentional about my technology usage. Right. So I don't feel compelled to add something to that and disrupt my routine and my processes. That's fair. But I don't see it as a negative thing. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we're very keen to hear thoughts from the audience. If anyone has an Apple Watch and they found it good or bad for being intentional with their technology usage, we would love to hear about it. Um, my current sample size is one, so I'm looking for more perspectives. Yeah, please do let us know. I think as two people who work in tech, thinking about how to add to the positive side of tech and take away from the negative side of tech, it kind of seems like throwing fuel in a fire, mm. but it's such an interesting and important point. And wearables are a really good example of this. So. Whatever experiences you have, we would love to hear about them because this is something that really interests us a lot. Absolutely. I think we're generally just really interested in where it makes sense to add friction and where it makes sense to take it away, which is a big theme that comes through in a lot of the digital minimalism lifestyle chats that we have and that we hear about. All right. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. I've always wanted to say like and subscribe. And now you've got to do it. Well done. <laughs> Bye. Bye.